Wow. Well, here we are again today with Brother Peter, uh, tidbits from the Word, and because of the guy that we're going to talk about this morning, who was Saul, who became Paul, I'm going to waive the a reading of the other uh, apostles this morning. We're going to get right in this right quick, like, and though he was part of the twelve, he was not with them on the road to Damascus. Remember, he was uh, riding on his horse, and uh, that Jesus appeared to him in a great light, and Jesus himself appeared to Paul, and Paul saw Jesus, otherwise he could not have been an apostle. An apostle was one who had to have an epistle. Jesus was the epistle, and you had to see him personally in order to be an apostle. There are a lot of people today that call themselves apostles, and we're not going to get into that matter this morning. We're not here for a great deep discussion on that, but to be an apostle, you had to have an epistle, and, and uh, we're followers of Jesus today, we're brothers of Jesus, we're sons of Jesus, we're better than an apostle today, uh, in the sense of the word, that we're closer to God, we're filled with the Holy Spirit, and the apostles of that day couldn't be filled with the Holy Spirit unless God just did a miraculous thing for a few minutes, and filled them until after Jesus went to the cross, and came back, and then filled them with the Holy Spirit. But while they were walking with him, they were just men like other men. Well, anyway, here comes Paul. He was Saul. He's killing the Christians, rightfully so, too, just like the zealot we were talking about uh, before. And and that was Judas, uh, not Judas Iscariot, excuse me. The zealot now was Simon, the zealot. He was killing people in the name of the Old Testament law, and he was within his rights. God did not condemn him for that. God didn't uh, refute him for that, didn't chastise, chastise him for that or anything but led him out of that type of life, just like he led Paul out of the type of life of killing the Christian. Paul was born in Tarsus. He was a member of, of the, the uh, Sanhedrin Jews that were born in Tarsus, and he was part of them. And, but he also uh, took a Roman uh, name and uh, became uh, 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 Paul. Uh, but Paul took Roman citizenship. Roman, a lot of Jews in that day that lived in the area of Rome, under Roman uh, rule, took Roman citizenship. Now, Paul was an astute man. He was a very, very, very intelligent man. If you want to know the truth of the matter, I, there's a man that walked on this earth that's in heaven now that I liken under Paul. And uh, there's really two or three of them. But James D. Kennedy's the man I think about who had a mind of knowledge, had a great mind of knowledge, but a great heart for God. Uh, man, I've heard some uh, tributes to Mr. Kennedy, how he would uh, preach in the pulpit and get out of the pulpit and go out, actually on the street and win a soul uh, during dinner time and, and do things like that after he had preached. And uh, uh, just, uh, I'm going to tell you what, he, he's in heaven now, and I pray that the Lord. Every time I ever mention his name, the Lord will put another Dahmer on his castle or put another tower up there. And, and Jesus said, I'm going to build you a mansion. And in that mansion, he said, uh, there you'll be. And I, 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 if, if he's building uh, Brother James D. Kennedy a mansion, I'd like to see another chimney up there on that mansion for him, for me mentioning him this morning and what he meant to me. <laughs> it's really funny. You want to know? Here's a man sitting in front of you with a. The uh, only reason I got an eighth grade education is the principal said, I'm going to get you out of the school for you and marry one of the teachers. So he got rid of me and sent me out with all D's and gave me a diploma. And uh, so I'm a I'm learning man, but I had great reverence and respect for the education of people like Brother James D. Kennedy and uh, the people like Paul. Paul left where he was over there. He was a tent maker. Paul uh, furnished uh, the money that he needed by making tents. Whenever he had to, he stopped and made a tent. And I got to hurry. So Paul went back to Jerusalem after the je death of Jesus. And he, he, he went back now to learn the teaching under Gamaliel, number one. Gamaliel, number one, was the most astute teacher of that day. Paul set himself apart now for three years in learning. Now let's remember that Jesus taught for three years, and three is a great word throughout the Bible. So Paul set himself apart now for three years. Now Paul, before that, when he was Saul, he stood at the stoning of Stephen. 
And now I got something I want to tell you this morning. Never heard before. Probably may never hear it again unless I hear myself saying it. But I, I like to think uh, kind of logically and illogically too sometimes. But here's Stephen. He got to heaven. He got up there and he stands before Jesus. And Jesus says to him, Stephen, what would you like me to do to those folks down there that just stoned you to death and he sent you up here? And I can just hear Stephen saying to Jesus, well, let's not lay this to the charge. I, I don't want to see Paul killed. If he was killed right now, if Saul, he'd die and go to hell. Let's bring him up here uh, with us later on. But before we do, let's give him a, a, a task to do. And then uh, remember now, God sent Peter over to Cornelius' house where Saul went. He was blind at this time, where he had been blinded by Jesus meeting him. And he said, Jesus said to Peter, I'm going to send you over there to Cornelius' house to tell this Saul, I'm changing his name to Paul, and I got a commission for him. And you tell him what great things he's going to have to suffer for my name's sake. Now, as a man that, that put, uh, put Christians in the lion's den, he killed Christians, he tortured Christians, he stoned them to death, he did everything to the Christians, and God's telling him now, before he even gets started, what he's going to have to face and suffer. And I'm sure that every time Paul was put in a prison or put in the stocks or put in the vines or anything, he could look back and say, you know, I did this to so-and-so, or I did this to so-and-so, or I did that to so-and-so, and now I'm taking the same thing. You know the old story, what goes around comes around, that's not always, that's not, I don't know if that's biblical or not, but it sure was with Paul. What, came, what he did went around and came on around and jumped right on him. Isn't that a beautiful picture? I love it. And, and you know that's where Paul probably got his strength. His strength. You say, where would a man like Paul, where would he get the strength to not deny Jesus? Well, he didn't have any. He didn't have any out. He didn't have any excuse because God could bring into his head the fact that he did to somebody else the same thing was happening to him, all the way down to getting boiled in oil, and uh, which happened to I uh, was it was it John? Uh, but anyway, it happened to to one of the others. Yeah, and um, so here's Paul out there, and uh, he he's uh, going on his journey. Now let's see what Paul did. Paul invented on many journeys. God used Paul to write 13 books of the Bible. You know, Paul was not married, but he wrote all about marriage. I tell you what, Paul didn't have any children, but he wrote all about children. Uh, he had a great insight. God had to come into, into Paul's brain, his head, and his heart, and give him all of these abilities. Now, uh, Paul appealed to Caesar. Agrippa, why? Why did Paul uh, uh, do that? For the reason is God wanted him to go to Rome. And in order for him to go to Rome, he had to appeal to Caesar. Well, on his trip to Rome, he was put on a ship and sent off to Rome. And I love this. Do you know what was funny? In the prison, Paul became the leader. On the ship, Paul became the leader. Do you know what those mariners, those ship guys, those guys, they, 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 they knew what they were doing now. They weren't fools. They, they, they were uh, ship, ship masters. They knew how to run that ship. They knew what to do in the storm. They knew everything but. You know who they came for advice? They came to Paul and said, Hey, Paul, what do we do? And Paul said, This is what you do. Uh, first thing you better do is unlock all the slaves and unlock all of us so when the ship crashes, we can all get off it without drowning. So I'm sure they went down and around and unloosened all the shackles, did what Paul said, knowing that they themselves would get killed if they got caught doing this. But anyway... Paul made this uh, made the statement. They followed what he said, just like in the prison when they was Paul and Silas were singing. Everybody always got saved around Paul, and everybody on that ship ended up getting saved. And I, perhaps now every single person that was on that ship ended up in heaven, including those Roman guys that were taking him to Rome. Our time has come and gone, and we hadn't really got in, really begin to get in to where Paul ended up down in Spain ended up preaching down there. And that's how some of these other apostles, disciples that we read about, ended up down in the Spanish world because of Paul going down there. Well, our time has come and gone, and uh, we've got to leave here in a second. But before I do, I want to put a hit on you this morning. W-O-A-K, 
Lagrange, Georgia is a radio station.